Hey gang, we are in Palatine, Illinois today at a cemetery that we've previously visited called St. Michael the Archangel Catholic Cemetery. Actually way up on the hill up there is where little A.J. Freund is buried. That story we did last year on the little boy was murdered by his parents. But today we're here to visit the grave of a 12-year-old little girl named Mary Kellerman who was murdered back in 1982. It was a serial killing. There were many others that were killed and it was about the Tylenol murders. You may remember, you may have heard about it. We're going to visit her grave and I will tell you the story on the way. Let's go. She lived nearby here in Elk Grove Village and it was on September 29th, 1982 that very early morning at dawn, it was still dark, and she had woke up, she had woken up, she felt terrible, she had a sore throat and a runny nose, and like many little kids, or many of us, you, you want to seek relief, and their parents gave her extra strength Tylenol to make her feel better. One capsule of the extra strength Tylenol is all it took because literally minutes later at around 7 a.m. they found Mary on the bathroom floor unconscious. She was immediately taken to the hospital where shortly thereafter she was pronounced dead very perplexing. They initially suspected that she had died from some type of a stroke, but evidence later pointed to a more sinister diagnosis. They decided to do an autopsy, and the next day their hunches were confirmed Cook County Chief Tox Toxicologist Michael Schaefer examined the capsules and discovered they were filled with approximately 65 milligrams of deadly cyanide, 10,000 times more than the amount needed to kill the average human being. Now the way cyanide works, guys, is it's one of the worst poisons. It basically prevents oxygen from getting to the cells. And of course the brain and the heart, the brain especially, uses a lot of oxygen. So it, it pretty much does its evil work very, very quickly. But Mary was not to be the only one, sadly. That very same day on the 29th, it was Adam Janus who would be the next victim. He lived over here in Arlington Heights, also nearby. He was 27 years old. And he died at the hospital later the day later that day after ingesting the Tylenol. Now, what's unbelievable is that his brother, Stanley, who's 25 years old, and his sister-in-law, Teresa, who was 19 years old, from Lyle, which is down south here, they came to the house after the death to support the family. They were grieving. So what happens? You get a headache. You go in the bathroom and you, you get Tylenol. And from the same bottle, they both took the Tylenol. And the same thing happened. They both died. Unbelievable. It continued to happen. There were more victims. Within a few days after that, Mary McFarland, 31, of Elmhurst, Paula Prince, 35, of Chicago, 
and also Mary Reiner, 27 years old from Winfield, which is right by Lyle, they all died of similar, similar incidents. Really terrible. Of course, McNeil Products, McNeil Consumer Products, which is the subsidiary of Johnson & Johnson, pulled everything from the shelves. They did the best they could. They immediately began a massive recall, and it really, it really hurt the company, I'll tell you. Looks like we have a policeman here. Robert Sharkey, 1928 to 1988. Sad. Looks like his wife. Yeah. And, and it, the news was going, you know, the, the newspapers, the, the media was going crazy. Understandably. Now, actually the people that, the way they broke the case was, you know, you, when they came to, to grieve at the house, you know, for Adam Janis, and Stanley and Teresa end up dying. That's really where they knew they had a, you know, that, that's where they found the bottle, the initial bottle. And they knew, you know, and they tested it, along with testing Mary's. And they knew they, you know, this, this is where it all kind of blew open. Now, there was this guy named James William Lewis who was, and he's still considered the suspect after all of these years, but he sent a extortion letter to Johnson & Johnson for a million bucks. And he was a schizophrenic guy. He is, a, if he's still alive, I don't know if he is. He, he's got some major issues, obviously. And what he did was he, the reason he sent the letter was not really to get the million bucks. He put it under the assumed name and account. He had the bank account number from the place that his wife worked. I think it was Lakeside or Lakeland Travel. And he was trying to get back at them because she didn't get her final paycheck. Paycheck bounced or something. He got into an argument with the owner. Threats. It's like, how can I get even? <laughs> well. He got caught, he got in major trouble. Went to jail for many, many years. And then even after the fact, ever since then, he's still been a suspect. But he was in New York at the time. You can't pin anything on him. But what's really sickening, what's really sickening about all this is that the copycats, now you've got the copycats. And I got to tell you, there's nothing more despicable than that. And it just, there were other deaths that were not associated directly with the Tylenol, but copycats and other people died. And I got to tell you, there's just evil all around us. I mean, look around, you're not going to see them. I can tell you from the channel, just, I've been doing this about a year and from comments, it's about, it's very accurately in analytics about 1%, one out of 100 people is just a nasty, evil person, a shitty comment. They get deleted and they get blocked, but that's why you don't see a lot of them, but it just shows you that a percentage of those people are the people that are doing all these things and continue to murder and rape and all these, this, this evil is all around us, guys. And you can just look at the percentages, it proves out. 
it absolutely proves out. Here is little Mary's grave right here with the spinning tulips. So she's not forgotten. Mary Ann Kellerman, our darling daughter, it says. I'm going to walk back here. I see more family members. Let me just come up around this way. I don't like stepping on graves if I can avoid it. Uh, this is her father, Peter, who died in 94. And there's some nice flowers here. And step to the side here. And by the way, it's okay to step on graves. I mean, the lawnmowers. And the, it's just, I do it out of more respect. And it's, it's all about the intent. I, I step on graves sometimes. Uh, mother and wife, Shirley M. Kellerman. She passed in 1989. Not long after, not long after the deaths of her, the death of their daughter. Well, seems like a long time ago, but it's really not. 1982. 1982 was the year after I got out of college. Wow. So sad. Well, what a waste. What a waste to have this happen. This beautiful young girl. I'm going to place a flower here for her. I'm so sorry this happened, Marianne. You did not deserve it. You did not deserve it. It's just the way the cards were dealt, I guess. Rest in peace, Marianne. Rest in peace.